functional programming and object oriented programming up to then haven't really been combined much. There were some attempts, but uh, they were not really successful. And Scala is sort of the first mainstream language that does that. In a previous video, we discussed Scala, a programming language invented by Martin Odersky, a full professor of the IC school at TPFL. We argued that Scala's main selling point was its ability to combine both functional programming and object-oriented programming. But what are these two programming paradigms? Both are uh, very old branches of uh, programming. Let's start with functional programming. Functional programming is actually older than computers, so it came from essentially mathematical logics, uh, lambda calculus. So it's the idea that you should program with functions, and the functions are mathematical functions, that means uh, they don't change anything, they just map inputs to outputs. Lambda calculus is actually one of the ways to introduce the notion of computing. It was introduced by mathematician Alonzo Church in the 1930s, and was then proved to be equivalent to the notion of Turing machines. That gives you a, a very safe and at the same time expressive programming discipline. For a long time, the world has ignored functional programming because essentially the, on very small computers, it wasn't really practical. Uh, there was an early language, which is sort of in the functional area, which is called Lisp. That's one of the earliest programming languages. But Lisp at the, at initially wasn't really functional like we understand the world today. Okay, let's move on to object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming came a little bit later, that's from 1967, or then became popular in the 70s and 80s. Uh, that's essentially a way to structure your program uh, in, uh, for me, it's, it's a modularity thing that you have essentially a module contains code and it has an interface. And object-oriented programming gives you a very flexible way to construct and compose modules, more flexible than the other paradigms where modules are more static, rigid entities. In particular, object-oriented programming allows users to structure their codes around so-called objects, each of which has its own specific way to be manipulated. For instance, you can define an object called 4D vector, and you can then specify that a 4D vector can be added to another 4D vector to produce a third 4D vector. So, functional or object-oriented programming? Which one is better? When Scala came out, it was uh, essentially functional programming was not very popular at all. And uh, it was very hard initially to convince people that they should give give it a try because it was the work was object oriented and Java was king of the hill and people didn't want to consider uh, other things. That has changed a lot in the last 12 years and now we often have the reverse challenge that people sort of are functional programming almost zealots, I would say. So they would discount the object oriented totally and only do essentially functional programming like they would program in a pure functional language like Haskell. And I think that those people also miss out a lot because they miss out on the modularity aspects. So it's sort of been difficult to find an find a way between the two paradigms because they're very, very entrenched, both object, the classical object oriented programming and the classical functional programming. And people in both paradigms really think that there can't be any compromise and uh, that uh, the other side is doesn't do it right. And it's very hard to sort of convince them that, yes, no, you can fuse them and you will profit from it. But what is the core difference between the two paradigms? There, there were two things which are actually fairly orthogonal that one was the uh, the side effects so i said functional programming is mathematical functions so they map inputs to outputs one thing they cannot do is sort of have a side effect so as you run them change something elsewhere that's not what a mathematical function does in functional programming a code is really just a sequence of operations and each operation inputs outputs from the previous operations and outputs inputs for the next operations. And by construction, any branch of the code cannot affect other branches. I think we have learned now that side effects are something rather problematic and you want to have as few of them as possible to be able to, be able to understand your programs and uh, also for many new architectures, distributed architectures, caching. Essentially, side effects and mutable states are a liability for all these things. By opposition, because functional programming has no side effect, many tools have been developed to automatically check the validity of functional programming codes. 
Functional programming pro programmers always think object-oriented programming is full of side effects and therefore you shouldn't look at it. But for me, object-oriented programming and side effects are really, again, two orthogonal issues. So, so you can, for me, like I said, object-oriented programming is a modularity construct. It gives you very flexible ways to modularize programs and uh, that you can do without side effects. So that's basically the basis of this fusion. But since the two communities sort of have this conception, the object and the community has the conception, functional programming is all academic and they don't know the real world. And functional programming says, well, this object or thing is full of side effects and we want none of that. They, are, they have been very apart. And in a sense, Martin Odersky's work has been about proving that the two worlds of computing could be combined. With Scala, you can take advantage of the nice structures of object-oriented programming while guaranteeing the validity of your code using functional programming like features. I'll argue that we are in a transition period between two programming paradigms, imperative object-oriented programming, that's what we used so far, and I think we are transitioning to more and more functional. In the end, I believe it won't be a transition that we will completely replace one, one with the other, but we'll see a fusion of these. In recent years, we have done a much better job at actually developing a theory and proving the theory sound. And the next step will be really to connect that better to the language.